do you want to get your D&D characters from D&D Beyond to Foundry VTT? Well, I'm going to show you how to do that in this Foundry VTT tutorial. Hi, my name is Fondu. On this channel, Dyson Easy, I give you Foundry tutorials, D&D tips and tricks, and daily D&D memes. So if that's something you're interested in, hit that subscribe button down there. Now let's get started with this Foundry VTT tutorial, shall we? So like I said, this is a tutorial for importing your characters from D&D Beyond to Foundry VTT. And it is possible there is a plugin for it that you can use, and I'm gonna show you how that works. So you're gonna need two things for this to work. You're gonna need the plugin itself called D&D Beyond Importer by Mr. Primate, and then you're gonna need your D&D Beyond Cobalt Cookie Key. I'm gonna show you how to get that. These are the two things. With that out of the way, let's go on to the tutorial. The first thing you're going to want to do is install the plugin to Foundry VTT. I'm gonna link the plugin down there below, but it's called D&D Beyond Importer. It's made by Mr. Primate. Thank you very much for making this awesome plugin and you can find it in the Foundry VTT plugin database, or if you're using the Forge, you just search for it on the Forge and then you install it. Remember to activate it though, because if you don't activate it in the world that you want to use it in, it's not gonna work. So remember, go to the world, go to the manage modules, activate it, save the module settings, and then you know that the module is working, okay? Great. Then the next step is getting the D&D Beyond Cobalt key and I will show you now how to do that. So head on over to D&D Beyond and remember to log into D&D Beyond before you do this. You can see here Devorin, my example character that we're going to use for the importing. But what you're going to want to do with your browser is press F12 on your keyboard or you can hit Control Shift I to open the console. Let me move my camera out of the way so that you can see what it opens up. And what you're going to want to do, let's zoom in, is go over here. So I'm using Google Chrome. This will look different depending on your browser. But these three little arrows up here, click that, go to application. You might have that already visible as a tab over here. You go to application, then you go to cookies. Open up this little arrow over here. There's dndbeyond.com. Click that. You're gonna see a bunch of stuff over here which might be a little bit confusing, but what you can do is go to the filter and type in Cobalt. And here you're gonna see Cobalt and then the value. This value is your Cobalt cookie key. Do not share it with anybody. This is very important. This is your unique identification for your D&D Beyond account. So if anyone else has access to this, they have all the access to your account. So do not share this value here. And I'm gonna be blurring this out in my video so that you can get my key. Now that you have that, let's hop on over to Foundry. All right, now we're in Foundry VTT. What we're going to want to do is go to the settings tab up here then go to configure settings. It's gonna open this little window over here. Go to module settings. I have a lot of modules installed. J just, you know, just don't make a thing of it, okay? I have, I have an issue, okay. And we're gonna search for the D&D Beyond Importer right here. If you don't see the D&D Beyond Importer, that means that you forgot to turn on the module. So go to manage modules over here and turn it on from there. But getting back to this, we open the D&D Beyond Importer, like so. I have a module that collapses these, you might not. And we go to Core Setup. This will open up a new window for us once more. And up here it says required a Cobalt Cookie Key. Here is where we're going to copy paste our key. I'm not going to do it right now here, but you're gonna to want to copy paste it with Control V after grabbing it like I showed you before. And then you can check the Cobalt Key Cookie and it should give you the okay for that. And then once you're done, remember, go down here, click save, and go here, click save changes. Now your Foundry instance might reload, so wait for it to reload and then let's continue. All right, now your D&D Beyond account and Foundry VTT are connected. So now when you're going to try to import a character, the plugin will know which account this character is in and is able to grab in all of the data necessary. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is create a player actor here in the actors tab up here and hit create actor. 
and then player character. It doesn't matter what name you give this actor because it will get overridden when you import the data from D&D Beyond. So we're just going to call it player one. It doesn't really matter. And we're going to have a generic player here. Now you'd have noticed there is a new button in your actor sheets. This D&D Beyond button with a red text and black background. Click that and it will open this new window. Now at this point, we're going to have to jump back into D&D Beyond because we're going to need the link for the specific character that we want to import. So let's jump back to D&D Beyond and I'll show you where to find that link. So going into D&D Beyond, you can go to collections up here and then my characters. That's where you're gonna see all of your characters and then select the character that you want to import. I have this character, Devorin, who is a Goliath cleric that we're gonna use as an example. So over here, you have the share button, just click that. It opens a little window here and it has a link for you. You click to copy. And that's it. Now you have the link that you need for the importing. So back to Foundry VTT. All right, now we're back in Foundry VTT and you have this little box here that says URL. That's where you're gonna put the link to your character. Hit Control V to get the link there and it says the character ID has a little green tick. That means it recognizes the link. We're under import character. There's a bunch of other options here as well, but we're not gonna go through those today. And here it says update selection. So only the ticked items will be updated. So depending on what information you want to bring over from D&D Beyond to Foundry VTT, you can select whichever ones you would like. And then of course, if you ever want to update your character from it with new information from D&D Beyond, you can only choose, you know, a few things depending on what you want. The update configuration, I would recommend leaving these as the default ones that you have. They're very solid in my opinion. And once we have all of this set up, we hit start import. It's going to be asking for your primary, secondary, and tertiary resources because your character sheet in Foundry will have these three resources that you can set to be whatever you'd like. And this depends on your character. Some builds will have no resources to track, some will, and some will have more than three as you can see with this character. So you can choose whichever ones you want to track here. It's really up to you and it can always be changed later on. So it's not a huge, deal but it just depends on what resources in your character would you like to track on the front page of your character sheet in foundry with all of those selected we click on the default and then it thinks for a little while and boom our character has now been imported from dnd beyond to foundry vtt of course there's no image here because i don't have an image in dnd beyond but if you would have an image that would also be updated here all the information is here speed race, class, level, the stats, we have the resources, we have inventory, we've got spells, we have the features over here. So everything is here. It's very handy. All your information has come through. One thing you might be thinking is, well, what if I want to update my information from Foundry VTT over to D&D Beyond? Say you're playing a fight in Foundry VTT, your health changes, your spell slots change, or spells available change, and you want to update that to D&D Beyond. Unfortunately, currently, you cannot do that unless you are a part of Mr. Primate's Patreon. I will link that also in the description below if you would like to do that. If you decide to do that, there is a little button uh, over here called Update D&D Beyond, and here you can select what stuff you would like to update to D, D beyond but as it says over here it's grayed out update available to patreon supporters only so you can push the information from foundry to D, &D beyond but you have to subscribe to mr primates patreon which i think is a, it, it's fair he's, he's made a great plugin so i think that's a fair ask but other than that this is how you bring a character from D, &D beyond to foundry vtt and there you have it, the tutorial to bring your D&D Beyond character from D&D Beyond to Foundry VTT. It wasn't too bad, I hope. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, let me know in chat if you plan to use this plugin for Foundry VTT. Again, down in the description, you will also find a link to that. And hey, a subscription and 
a like would also be very much appreciated while you're down there. It does help me out a lot more than you could imagine. And hey, I also stream every Monday and Wednesday on twitch.tv slash dice and easy at 6 p.m. Eastern European Standard Time. That is twitch.tv slash dice and easy. Come hang out with me there. Talk about D&D and tabletop RPGs and I play games. It's a fun time. You should come hang out. But hey, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial for Foundry VTT and I will see you in the next video. Okay, happy 2023. Bye-bye.